Hey, Neil, how's it going? Good, how are you? Fantastic. So from last year, obviously with COVID, all the stadiums were pretty much completely empty. And this Saturday, it's going to be a completely packed house in Las Vegas. What gets you most excited about that? And what do you think the biggest difference will be from competing this Saturday in a packed house to competing in an empty stadium last year? Yeah, I think the first thing is about damn time, right? That we have fans and and it to be, you know, normal um, with the packed house and stuff. Uh, I think that's probably the biggest thing that uh, I'm excited for. I think that's what makes college football um, so amazing is the fans and, um, you know, both sides doing what they do, cheering for their teams and stuff. But I'm definitely excited to see. I think yesterday I saw on Twitter 57,000 fans uh, being at the game because I know it will be loud. Uh, so we're just going to have to make sure that, um, you know, the juice is not – all out when it's uh when it's pregame and make sure that it's used uh, when it's time to kick off. Hey, Jared, and then Bryce. Neil, you're on the leadership council this year, and what does that entail for you? And and how important is it to have the leadership group and the captains working together as far as as that element uh, for the team? Yeah, I think Kalani has uh, done a great job on just trying to establish leaders on the team. Even if they weren't chosen, there's a bunch of leaders on this team that, you know, bring motivation somehow, some way. Um, but it was cool to be chosen from uh, your teammates and then look that as one of those guys that they can come to, uh, to voice their opinions, to share their thoughts on what we could do, what we should do, uh, what they would have done. Um, so it was just cool. But, uh, you know, we just take it a step at a time and, um, us leaders will discuss, but then we got to discuss amongst the rest of the team how we feel in, and we'll just make it a team thing and player driven. And that's what Kalani wants. He's always trying to have it player driven, and that's what we're going to do. And I wanted to ask about the challenge of holding guys accountable because, as leaders, that's going to be part of your jobs, I'm sure. And you know that comes on the field, off the field, you know, practice, academic wise, things like that. What's what's that part of it is you know like you know as you as you work to hold each other accountable? Yeah, I think as players. Um, you know, the coaches get a better feel because they get reports each week on how each player is doing uh, with their academics. Academically, I think they they kind of handle that with uh, the counselors and all that stuff. But, you know, as leaders on the team, I think accountability on the football field is, is pretty easy. And if people know me, I like to voice my opinion and make sure that it's heard uh, right or wrong, because I like to be corrected as well. Uh, but making sure that they hear that I'm trying to keep them accountable, but make sure that they can also hold me accountable. If I'm a little slow one day or uh, I'm not, you know, playing the way that I should be, uh, I just want it to be both ways. So um, I think that's the best way that we, we have seen it and discussed it. And that's the way we're about to go, uh, go about it. Hey, Neil. Okay. Oh. All right, good. hey, Neil. So by from a lot of people, you're being picked as a potential breakout player this season. Um, what do you feel like in the past, over the summer and um, the spring, what do you feel like you've added to your game to make yourself you know, like take that next step? Um, you know, that's a good question. I don't know. I, I feel like I've stayed consistent with my work ethic, making sure that I, you know, work hard because I, I am a believer in the process and in the journey. And when opportunity is there, I think that's probably the biggest thing. It's just opportunity has been given to, to me uh, to be able to produce. Uh, with certain plays that will be called and um, because of what, what I've done uh, in the off season uh, to, I guess, strengthen uh, my one legged stepping, uh, try to break down in and out, break a little faster. I think that's probably the biggest thing that worked off this off season. Um, but I think just that opportunity to be able to go out and to catch balls and be kind of the, the focal point of the offense is, is probably what's new. But my, my work ethic has been consistent and, always stay consistent um so also with that um we just barely had dax milm he made the the roster and yeah. he was that breakout player last year how often do you look to him as an inspiration but also like talk to him about what's going on if, if at all uh yeah me and dax we we just keep it on a on a cool level if i haven't talked to him much about since he since he got into the league about how uh, he, well, not about how he's doing, but about like releases and all that stuff. We used to talk about it when he was here. Um, I talk about that with uh, my receiver group right now, just releases and what I should do, what I could do. 
Uh, but me and Dax, it's just cool just to see what he's doing out there for him to make the 53 man roster. I texted him right when I heard about it. Uh, super stoked for him, and he definitely deserved it. He just, he's a grinder and he works hard for, for what he wants. And I'm glad that he was able to, to get that. Awesome. I'm excited to see you this Saturday. Yeah, thank you. Jake, go ahead. And then Dana. Neil, you are a big wide receiver listed at 6'4", 225. Do you feel like your skill set has morphed at all this year going into this season as compared to past seasons? Wait, what was that question again? I heard the big receiver part, though. And so so how is your, like, in terms of your skill set, your role yeah. on this team, has it, has it changed at all going into this season as compared to what it's been maybe in the past? No, I think the I think it's just opportunity. I think uh, people have to make plays, and I've been able to do that all camp. Uh, so, you know, as one of the guys that they're looking to to, to step out and to to make those plays, I'm I'm gonna take those in stride uh, each and every day to make sure that they can trust me. So throughout practice, throughout workouts, making sure that they see me and know that when game day comes around, that they can trust me with the with the ball in the air, then that will be caught. I also wanted to ask you just in terms of what you've seen from film on Arizona, especially their defensive backs. Yeah, uh, we've been watching a lot of Michigan film to understand the scheme and stuff today at work. Um, I watched uh, their spring game probably about twice, twice or three times. So uh, one thing that I've gotten just from their corners, they're long, um, uh, dealing with long corners, knowing that, you know, we can't get as close to them. Um, and with our releases, because if we get too close, the, they'll just attach and just ride with us. Um, and their safety, they're just, they're speedsters, you know, they're going to, they're going to play hard. Michigan always played hard. So I guarantee the coaches will make sure that they play hard and they'll be a little juiced up to prove that, you know, they're not the same team last year that they are. And they want to, in a sense, take us down or whatever it is that they have in their heads. Um, but, you know, we're just going to come in do what we got to do, focus on us and everything should be, uh, what it is by the end of the game. Hey, Neil, apologize. This has already been asked. It's kind of joined. But um, uh, have you noticed the difference in, in Jaron since he's been named the starting quarterback? Is he kind of maybe taking more of a command of the offense? Is his uh, uh, ego gone through the roof or something? <laughs> <laughs> how, uh, how, how has he been as a leader ever since he's become, uh, you know, officially the starting quarterback? Yeah, I think Jaron Jaron's more of a quiet dude. Um, he'll say stuff when he needs to be said so he allows all the the talkative guys such as myself to to go and say what needs to be said but I think you can just see that QB1 swag that uh, people get um, when they're named the starter uh, Zach had it and Jaron you can definitely see that with him that you know now that he has the reins and he's called like he's the main guy uh, he's been slinging that thing so hopefully we can all put it together and come Saturday we'll be able to put on a show